the Stuarts. It came in with a lass by Mike Walker. The story of Mary, Queen of Scots. Who she was? You want to know who she was? Well, many men and women do, but few enough know as well as I know. Oh, they'll give you a hundred answers, a thousand, and they'll all be right, and they'll all be bollocks. Bothwell was a man before ever she came home. I was her mother's man, Mary of Guise, a regent of Scotland. Aye, but I was never, ever her brother's dog, that sheet-strained commonwealth they called Jamie Earl of Murray, half a king's son and all a greedy, arrogant, treacherous wee bastard. And what in all of this of love, Dominie? Did not our Lord command Think us... Think you that our Lord is a God of love? Think again, woman, for he is a God of wrath, and he will gently, not... Gently, good doctor, gently. There's no call to be shouting so when speaking to your queen. I dare say her ears are perfectly fine for any words you might have to offer. I speak not with the tongues of men, oh, but with the... trust me, John, you're no angel. My Lord Bothwell, we thank you for your words. I am but a rough man, Majesty, but you may always count on me as your man. I think we all know what we can count on you for, Bothwell, and it's not generally conciliation and restraint. He has allies, Henry. Possibly more support in the country than we do. We could be in deep trouble. So... What happens now? We send for Bothwell. This is where I come back into the story, and it seems to me the story was made for Bothwell, as the Queen was made to be mine. For in this world, a man is what he makes of himself and what he takes for himself. As for Murray and his bloody rebels, lords of the congregation, that piss-weak crew had tried every damn trick they could to exile me, imprison me, kill me, but no, Bothwell was back. My lord, well met. I came as fast as I could, Majesty. Sire, I give you joy of the morning. I thank you, sir. Your journey? The bloody English did their best to stop me getting here at your brother's request. Paid the pirate Wilson to waylay my ship. We got through anyway, and we'll get through now, Majesty, with you at the head of your army, with a pistol in every hand. <laughs> and I'll shoot if I must. You inspire the matter. Leave the shooting to me. I will, sir, if you will take command of the Royal Army. Uh, let us not forget, my dear, it is my army too. I think my father Lennox would make a better Captain General. His state is higher than this gentleman's. I must think on that, Henry. And well, you do. Moray and his allies would be chasing about making mischief. And that is not for me to remind you, sir, that if you had gone into the marketplace and shouted, I am the king, who will shed their blood for me? You might have got an idiot boy and a stray dog, but not much more. Bothwell! You will take that back. I say you will, sir. Then I will. Forgive me, sire. Very well. And if you'll just let me borrow this army to kick some hairy Scots ass before it vanishes in the heather. <laughs> you have a way about you, Bothwell. Take the army, but the matter of command you can will wait. Since we all know there is but one at the head of our company, and she's got bigger bollocks than any man in it. <laughs> Except me. Got speed, I'll be about my business, madam. Sir! Ha! I didn't like that. <laughs> Where are they, my lord? Where is our enemy? You promised us a victory today. Where is it, eh? Bothwell, what is this? <laughs> nothing! It is nothing! The great Earl has given us victory. We have the field. The enemy is fled. How so? The Lords of Congregation have slipped across the border. They had no stomach for a fight. They knew they would lose, and in doing so, have lost their war. <laughs> there will be no republic in Scotland this day. It will be as God intended, a queen on the throne. Then there is work to be done. See, all are rewarded. David! David, I need your hand. At your command, Majesty. Some war? 
some victory. No one regrets it more than I, sir. A victory without blood is like taking a woman without a fight. Oh, I wouldn't know. I've never had to take a woman. They're quite happy to give themselves. That's just as well. What does that mean? Whatever you take it to mean. You think well of yourself? Have a care. I can call on a dozen knights to have you taken. Oh, is that how you do with the ladies? That's enough, Bothwell. Or oh, what? You don't even have the balls to see off we Davy Rizzio. What are you saying? I'm saying your wife has kicked you out of bed and your own father, Lennox, has left the court because you're such a, a whoremongering, pox-ridden, wine-sudden apology for a man. You're not even a proper king. You're just your wife's hand puppet. <laughs> I wish you joy of your victory, Majesty. You'll excuse me. I have a man's work to do. It was politics. So is this, you wee English saint. Politics, Scottish style. And I had absolutely nothing to do with it, really. I thought the man was a cock, and he was, but Bothwell doesn't kill people in that way. If you're my enemy, look for me standing in front of you. No, that was Murray's work. I tell you, Majesty, I believe there are three worlds. In one, God rules. In one, Satan. And in this one, power. And power resides in the edge of a sword, in a battery of cannon, and the courage to strike the final blow. It is what I have come to believe. The arguments will never cease until there is no argument to be had. The Queen rules by God's command. To go against the Queen is to go against God. Whatever the Kirk and Mr Knox may say. And the woman? What does she say? When I came back, I asked myself, who am I? Who is Mary lost in the mist? Um. She is just mist now. Nothing else remains. There is only the Queen. And to go against the Queen must bring down upon the heads of all the certainty of the wrath of God. Could it be done? By God's hand on earth it could. And yet I cannot lead an army. You can inspire an army. And by Christ, I can lead her. <laughs> do we dare? If we do not dare, we do not deserve. And the risk? That's what makes it all worth doing. <laughs> All or nothing. The whole world or a world of stones. To bruise and turn the heel. Mary, you are magnificent. Marry me and we shall take this world and make it ours. Oh, by God, they love us! They do, for now. Money and whiskey can make a miracle. Bollocks! Do you know what they see? They see a king who is not afraid to be a king, and a beautiful woman who is not afraid to be his queen. They see us here proud, no excuses, we are what we are. <laughs> and be damned to those dogs who yap at our ankles. Not a king yet. And those dogs have a bite. And I have a sword. And we have an army. And what isn't worth fighting for isn't worth having, huh? <laughs> hey! <laughs> smile, woman, smile. Let them see what a king and queen look like as they go by. Mary, if you're a beauty in your clothes... Unwrapped, you're a goddess. I can see why Darnley wanted to get back into your bed. Tonight I'm tired. Tonight is our wedding, sweetheart. There will be time. Lots of time. Well, we'll turn like the present. But not this time. I'm... And I say yes. This time, no. Would you take what is not freely given? You only have to wait. What isn't worth fighting for isn't worth having, and you, Mary, are so very worth having. She would never forgive him for what he took unbidden. But in his way, in his time, he was a splendid bastard of a man. 
Madam! How do we stand? In this mess, we don't know. We, they could be a mile distant, uh, 50 yards. There was a mist on the day I came back to this country. We could not land. Well, today we cannot fight. Until the sun burns it off, we cannot even see where we stand. Majesties. Randolph, what are you doing here? Observing. No more. I hope you find it entertaining. I never find pointless killing entertaining, my lord. You know you've lost the day before it begins. Go to hell, Ambassador. Or to England, since they're pretty much the same. We stay. Go on, Randolph. If you do not know it, your men do. They've been trickling away all morning. They would rather live to fight again or go home to their farms and their families. This road leads to one end only. You think death scares me? Wait, Bothwell. Are you certain, Randolph? Your brother and the lords offer you terms. Your people may go. Your husband may go out of the country. And you will give yourself up to them. As queen? Never. I will never give up my country or my queen. Hush now, sir. As their prisoner, then? Whilst you live... You fight. We'll attack! Piper! Sir, in the advance! There is no Piper. There is no army. An idiot boy and a stray dog. <laughs> Ambassador, go back to my brother and his lords. Tell them I will agree. Bollocks to the hug. Murder! Murder! Any one of you, come out sinless man to man! Single combat, damn you, there's not a man amongst you. Feast me, feast my sword, damn you, all heal us down. For my queen and my country both will stand. Come out, you bloody cowards, steal on steel, some limp lad, all or nothing. Are you feared to die? Come out. Feast me, damn you, feast me. In It Came In With A Lass by Mike Walker, Mary was played by Jeannie Spark, John Knox by Brian Cox, Darnley, Tom Myson, Bothwell, Michael Burtonshaw, and Murray by John Mackay.